Since Illustrator by default doesn't make new swatches global colors, it's important to understand why you should use them. So in this movie, we'll cover the importance of using global colors as you create new colors and add them to your swatches palette. Let's jump into it. So we're going to use my modern culture artwork as an example here. And I should just say that the reason why I think this is so important is it just makes coloring so much easier. And there was a version of Illustrator that actually had it by default turned on. And I convinced the Adobe Illustrator team at that time, I believe it was like CS6 or CS5 version of Illustrator where they had global swatches as the default instead of raw colors, as I'm going to show you. And all the Adobe certified experts complained about it. Why? I have no idea. And I think you're going to see why you should use them as I explain things here. It makes color editing so much easier. So if we look at these designs and I look at this pug specifically, if I go ahead and direct select what makes up his body, his base color, and this is what's called the fawn pug. I don't know if you're familiar with pug breeds or the colors that they come in. I grew up with a pug, so I love them. The pug we had was a fawn color. And so I thought this color wasn't super accurate. And it, when I select it, you can see this raw color selects in the swatches panel. So if I go over here and double click on that swatch and open it, I can get access to what the color break is. And I just don't think this color is working well. We also have this color applied to the bull's horns and this kind of devil character over here on his horns as well. And I think we can improve this. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this color. We're going to remove all the cyan. And then on the magenta, we'll make this 10%. And then we're going to bump up the yellow to 35 and we'll add a little bit of black like that. And I think this is going to work better. But notice if I go to preview, it's not going to preview anything because it's not a global color. And even if I click this, it wouldn't preview anything because I don't have global colors applied to those. So that's one drawback of not using global colors. Will it change the color after I punch these in? Of course, if I click OK, you can see the swatch changes, but none of these colors change over here. If I select this again, it doesn't even select that swatch because it's no longer the same color. So it's not connected to the swatch. That's the problem. And if you have a complex illustration or a design layout and you have a bunch of different objects that are colored this color and you want to change the color, you have to manually go select it. Or in this case, we can go back to the color we just edited and I can go ahead and turn on the global, click it to select it. Now it's a global color and click OK. It has that bottom right triangle that's white that denotes that it's a global color. That's great. Now I can select all the color that I originally used here. I can select one and using my keyboard shortcut, I can go option F1, select all the same color. Then I can change it to this global color now. And when I did that, I didn't mind the pug so much, but on the horns, I think that color is a little too dark. So if I now go back into that global color and I go ahead and we're going to knock off some percents, we're going to go down to four here. I think that looks better. If I preview now, notice how you'll see the preview on these shapes from dark to light. And I think the light looks much better. I'll click on that. And that's why you'll want to use global color. And that's a good comparison between a raw color, which isn't designated as global, and a non-global color. I also think this yellow and all these designs, and there's a common visual vernacular with this set of artwork I did for modern culture. The tolerances, they're all square shape proportions. They all use the same thickness of the inner line. They all have the same thickness of the outer line. And I use a lot of similar color palettes for all of them. So they all work as a family. But I think this yellow is a bit saturated. It almost looks like the SoFlow yellow you'd see in a highlight marker. And I want to change that. Well, it's a global color. I don't have to touch the art. I can just go to the global color, click into it, 
and then just make whatever changes I want to do here. I think we need to add some magenta to this. So I'm going to add 18%. I can preview it and check out all the changes. It's just instantaneous wherever it's been applied. That's why you want to use global colors. It even applies it to tint. So if you look at this wizard, this is the base color, and these are just tints of that base color. It changes the tints as well. And you can only do tints using global colors. So that's what I want to show you next. So this is a good example of how it makes coloring and exploration of color and application of color really important to use global. So let's go ahead and look at tints really quickly. I have these square shapes here, just three square shapes. These are colored, this raw color. It's not a global color. So let's say I want to take the second one and I want to make a tint. You go to the colors and there's no tint controls here. Why is that? It's because I'm using a raw color. It's not global. So if I go into this and change it to a global color, and click OK. I have to apply it to these shapes now because they're still using the raw version. Now it's global. I can select this second shape, go to color, and all of a sudden you get the tint controls. So I might bring this all the way down to 60% tint of our base color here. And this one, I'll change to 30% tint. And that's how you can do tints of color. They have to be global in order to work. But the benefit, once again, is if I ever decide I want to change this, all I need to do is change the color in the swatch. Maybe I want to get rid of the yellow and I want to bring a lot of the blue out of it. So I'll bring it down and then I'll change it to like a purple type color like that. If I go to preview, notice how it will change not only the base color, but the application of the tints to the other objects as well in the documents. This is why global colors are a no-brainer. This is why I still think they should be the default standard in Illustrator, but for whatever reason, there's people out there that don't agree with that, and I don't understand why. This is why on every new document I create, it by default creates all of these global colors, so I have a quick kind of jumping off and springboard to do color exploration. I don't use all the same colors on everything, obviously, but this helps me to get the process started quickly. So make your creative life easier and use global colors whenever you work on a project. It's a good creative habit. <laughs>